Hi. Welcome to this week's hashtag how to run for mayor, the grandfather clause. Here we discuss the seventh prerequisite and the reign of E.H. Boss Crump. This is the last session before spring break. Seventh prerequisite. The reign of E.H. Boss Crump. We have to understand that segregation can be just as good as most people think it's bad, because shut off from the world, we tend to create administration of our own. With segregation masked by Plessy v. Ferguson and the will to achieve still strong in African Americans, whites, and coloreds alike found comfort with representation from Boss Crump. In 1873 one of the first public high schools for African Americans named Clay Street School had the educator Green Polonius Hamilton as its principal. From Holly Springs M.S. Crump had found a niche in cotton before entering his life of politics where his legacy reminds us of how much cotton, like tobacco in Virginia, controlled the South but Memphis even more so. In 1891 Clay Street School changed its name to Court Rect, and in 1908 Hamilton published, The Brighter Side of Memphis, proving Plessy v. Ferguson valid at least in Memphis. With Crump born in Holly Springs MS on October 2, 1874, by the time he moved to Memphis at the age of 19 in 1893 there was a stark difference between those educated and others who were not as much. As those educated made up but a small percentage, Crump worked those with less at the Walter Goodman Cotton Company and could see Hamilton's brighter side shine all the more. Not that whites feared the magnitude of African Americans in the city, but certainly caution may be better considered, but that's only an issue when one feels African Americans are uncivilized or more so such. Before his political career E.H. Boss Crump was a broker and trader for King Cotton, and forming what came to be a political machine with statewide influence in 1910, his legacy was tied to Memphis and Hamilton the Treasury. At 19 and in the big city looking for work was arduous, but Crump finally found employment at a cotton company on Front Street in Memphis downtown. Cotton is such a beautiful plant, but woven, threaded, stitched and seasoned as we prepare meals there was and is just as much variety and style. Unable to escape the need for education in Memphis Virgin Market, many whites resented that before the war it was illegal for Africans to read and write or vote. Crump, a wealthy Democrat cotton broker and trader needed the cooperation of the whole community and catered to those Republican as much as Democrat. Hamilton's school was Crump's example of how Plessy v. Ferguson was a reality here. Now pictured as some high society school for African Americans due to being separate but equal Cordrecht was not just equal to whites, but possibly better than most. With Crump's success in the cotton industry, feeling he could run government just as well, he began forming a political machine that spanned decades and perhaps and surely still has an effect now. While Hamilton's focus on education may have not produced cotton pickers, a band of literate professional men and women needed more tailors, designers, haberdashers for the culture than the city bred. The need for cotton accompanied attacked and education afforded where Hamilton structured curriculum around a proper presentation and the pride found in a brotherhood of educated boys who became voting citizens. In 1911 Plessy v. Ferguson pushed for a white school to compare with Hamilton's educational program having B.C. Alsup design the historic Central High in use today. Politically a Democrat in Memphis, Crump was elected mayor, served from 1910 to 1915 and again in 1940 with an influence some say is still felt today. At court rec subjects taught were secondary to behavior where students could choose the benefits of order with customary behavior or the detriment of unstable steps which cause us to fall. Planting, chopping, and picking cotton was then all many ever knew and boss Crump used that to his advantage and the benefit of a city he preferred to others he made home. Education became a trend, and more parents were raising children to go further in education than they had so they could return and show those who couldn't see the light. As the University of Memphis founded in 1912 started as a normal school the institution then small stood behind the city and subsequently Crump. Seeing Plessy v. Ferguson as a reality with educators like Hamilton training young scholars in the way they should go the proletariat awake is threatening without structure. Court Rec provided that structure for African Americans ensuring domestic tranquility in a city where black pride started with education. As Crump was bound by the economy to King Cotton and relatively comfortable moving to our big city, Memphis, Crump became what many thought at that time was a success. Central High School produced a drive for education which kept standards high. The University of Memphis founded in 1912 then as a normal school now pulls scholars from all around the nation and world. Under Hamilton Court Rec produced a culture unique to African Americans but Memphians all the more. Crump's legacy makes smaller men of most, while Hamilton's institution led to a higher standard of living for African Americans in a brighter side of Memphis. Crump was just as dominating in politics as he was in the cotton industry, and if not more so. From when he left office in 1915 until his death on October 16, 1954, he practically appointed every mayor of the city whose allegiance to the economy made of Crump a shrewd and effective businessman. With a better vision than most, his statue in Memphis presides in Overton Park as inspiration to future generations of what is possible for one man to orchestrate. But that's only if we consider money more valuable than chemistry or loyalty between one citizen and another connected merely by thin strings and common law. Edward Hull Crump's political career in Memphis enhanced his being a broker and trader for King Cotton, but without his position on education ensuring domestic tranquility would have been more difficult. In 1873 Clay Street School, one of the first high schools for African Americans in the city opened under Hamilton and changed its name to Court Rect in 1891. In 1908 Hamilton wrote A Brighter Side of Memphis. 
In 1911 Central High School was opened in its now historic building. In 1912 a normal school now the U of M was founded all adding to the legacy of Crump. That concludes the information for this session. Spring break is here, so enjoy yourselves but be safe. We'll see you back here in two weeks on the 21st where we cover the 8th prerequisite. Thanks for your time and attention.